For those of you who follow my videos, you know that I've been in the throes of building a uh, tunable loop antenna. My first one, never built one before. Anyway, it turned out pretty good. It turned out better than I expected. Gosh, I tell you, I, and boy, does this thing work. So I thought I would go ahead and do a separate video and not include it in my mishmash videos. You know, just do a separate video and uh, by itself. And now it's not exactly a thousand percent perfect, but I told you it would not be perfect in the beginning. There are some little boo-boos that I don't personally like, but most people wouldn't even notice them. However, uh, I thought I'd explain a little bit to you of what it is and then uh, give you a little demo on the radio. All I did was take a couple of wooden uh, bars, left and right, I stained them, I toned them, and I hooked them all together on this uh, vertical mast using some plastic that I had cut out and uh, with long, these are one inch uh, brass screws with flat washers and on the other side I've got a flat washer, a lock washer and a nut, I'll show you that then I decided to put a, you know, a red uh, you know, fake jewel in the center, I thought that was kind of neat, that, that, that's kind of a that's kind of my little touch there, I think these things should be decorative rather than just functional, they can be both, okay now, down here at the bottom is a tuner knob. I have a switch that goes up and down. Now, what that switch does is it throws in another 360 picofarad capacitor in parallel with the tuner. So I can get down below 700 kilocycles. I could have put a larger tuner in there, but it would have been, I think, too big and gaudy and too heavy. So I decided to go with an idea I found on the internet where uh, you just throw in a capacitor by flipping up the switch once you get down around 700 kilocycles. It works perfectly. Then of course just a couple of old uh, banana plugs right there. Mounted the whole thing to the bottom. Uh, I chiseled the hole out and then sunk the whole thing down in and then for strength uh, I ran a screw up through the bottom into the center of the wood and I also mounted up a, a nice little neat mound of epoxy. I want it to be strong. I didn't want it to be uh, breaking off, you know, within 30 days after the person gets it, who this will be given to. Nice and sturdy, you know, it's got a double base. Bought them at Hobby Lobby, top and bottom. Just screwed them together from the bottom up. Underneath, I put four circular uh, pads for legs. That's all there is to it, okay? And there's the two screws that hold the top and bottom pieces of wood together. Nothing to it. Piece of cake. Now on the back, here's your tuner right here. Here are the uh, the back of the uh, the two banana plugs, and of course here's your on-off switch. Any switch would do. And there's the 360 picofarad capacitor that runs that that this switch controls that throws it in parallel with the tuner. All right, now. Up here, these are all the nuts and everything. You know, standard old operation procedure. You know, just make sure you use lock washers with them. You don't have to use brass. I like to use brass. I'm kind of a brass nut. For those of you who follow my videos, you know that. So that's about it, you know. Now, here, here's the way that this thing works. The two outside wires. These two outside wires that run all the way around the uh, frame are connected to the two banana plugs. One end of the wire goes here, and the other end of the wire goes there. On the back, it's soldered on. Soldered on. I use little short banana plugs, by the way. I found them at Radio Shack. I like those. They were smaller, but I just soldered them one here and one there. That was it. These two wires go to the radio. Using alligator uh, gator wires, you can, you can, or you can use banana plug wires and push them in. Uh, the red one would go to the antenna connection. The black one to the ground. The other massive wiring that you see here comes down and is connected to the tuner, okay? There is no physical connection between the two outside wires here and the rest of the wires. There's no connection. It all works off of inductive coupling. It's kind of interesting the way this thing works. I was really fascinated by it all. Anyway, I'd like to have a larger knob. The knob I'm using is too small, but unfortunately it's the only one I have. I'd like to have a nice big old knob that covers up those two brass screws. But anyway, all the rest of the wires come down. And again, you just have two wires when you're all done, two, two ends. And one 
hooks to the one side of the capacitor and the other one is soldered to the other side of the capacitor down here just like you would any capac any any variable capacitor and then of course the switch uh, has the, the this uh, 360 uh, peak farad capacitor across it that throws it into parallel so that's it now lessons learned on this thing what should I have done differently you know since it was the first one I expected that there would be some some uh, things I when I get done that I, I thought I should have done differently by the by the way these are this is just plastic with plastic paint on the back I beveled the corners because I thought it would be better than something pointed I didn't like that pointed look if I had to do this over which I probably will at a later date I would have used thicker plastic here this is a little bit too flimsy for my blood you know as long as they take it easy with it it'll be okay but I expect it to break eventually and they'll wind up bringing it back I should have used thicker but I couldn't find thicker so I used what they had for sale now up here is plenty strong no problem at all and lots of strength right there but down here it's just a little too flimsy I, I don't like that I don't like that at all see it see it flexing that's and uh, the wire well I use 22 gauge uh, red uh, coated enamel wire probably 24 gauge would have been better you got to be careful though while you're stringing it because with 24 it's pretty thin you can slice your finger anyway the wires I strung them as tightly as I could and when I got to the top here I wrapped it once around the the brass nail and then went down around to the next one to the next one brought it back up and when I got to the next top nail I wrapped it a second that on that one I only wrapped these nails here I probably should have wrapped either all of them or the top ones and the bottom ones okay one coil of wire around kept it nice and snug because the two outside wires I may have to tighten these up just a little bit more they're just just not tight enough the inside is real good nice and tight these two outside wires are a little bit too loose in my blood so I may have to wind up tightening them up just a little bit more all right that's it that's the construction of it the way it works this inside set of wires picks up the radio station you tune it with this knob right here and then after it's tuned it is sent to these two outside wires that are connected to the radio and they're connected to the radio through gator wires from here okay so let's go in and see what that thing sounds like I'll show you how I'll give you a little demo here I know I went through that kind of quick so let me go ahead and go through it a little bit slower for those that may want to go ahead and build one of these. Now remember, you don't have to build it as large as the one I built. You can build one you know, smaller in size. It doesn't have to be that big, you know, big long arms and all that stuff. As I told you, the two outside coils go to the radio. One goes to the antenna and one goes to ground, okay? Now all the rest of those coils, they come over and they go to the variable capacitor like that now here's the variable capacitor okay and from the variable capacitor I put another a switch and then another capacitor in parallel with that one so when I get down below 70 uh, or 700 kilo cycles I can close the switch and throw in this additional 360 uh, peak of Ferris. Now you can use a 300, you can use probably a 250. I just happen to have a 360 on hand, so I threw that in there. The variable capacitor, by the way, is 365 peak of Ferris. Okay? And this thing I use was 360, but you know, a, a nice 300 would go good. Okay? Peak of Ferris. Well, I'll tell you, this one had business is for the birds. There we go. So that's what we have. These two are not physically connected in any way. Ground and antenna on the radio connected to the, uh, to the uh, variable capacitor with a, another capacitor in parallel with it. Now these, these here are the ones that go to that uh, the red and the black, you know, banana plug things. Okay. That's all there is to it. There's nothing to it. Now it's important that I give credit where credit is due. I always try to do that if possible. And a lot of my ideas that I used on this variable uh, or tunable loop antenna came from Dave's Radio Loops you know, on the website uh, on, the, on the internet. He has some really cool stuff here. These are some of the uh, 
these are some of the antennas he made, but he has boxes at the bottom of these two. And this one here, he has a, a double base like mine. It's a little smaller, of course, but he used round stock instead of square. Now, that would be really hard to drill holes in as far as I'm concerned. And I think he ran the wires right through the wood and right through the wood instead of wrapping them around brass nails. However, he did do brass nails. Uh, here's another one of his creations right there. That's a big sucker there. <laughs> but he did a good job. He gave me a lot of good ideas and I really appreciate it. That's the kind of knob I'd like to get for the one I built. I've got the antenna hooked to my Philco 630B. So let's go ahead and hook up the, uh, get a little bit closer here. The red wire goes to the antenna on the chassis. The black wire goes to ground on the chassis. So now I've got it hooked up there. The reason I'm using gator wires is because the banana clips, if I were to, I mean, if I were to use banana plugs and they push it in too hard, they would snap that off there. Like I said, that plastic's awfully thin. So for now, we're going to have to use uh, gator wires. But I'm certain they'll they'll break it <laughs> and they'll bring it back and I'll go ahead and fix it. All right, let's go ahead and crank up the volume. Let's see, I got our switch down. Let's see if we can tune in a any station. Now I've got the volume all the way up. It's all the way up. Now we'll go ahead and tune this antenna and watch what happens. Just listen to the radio. Is that amazing? Is that, is that amazing or what? Did you see how loud? <laughs> you know, why I messed with an antenna up in a tree is beyond me. <laughs> of course, that works for... Now, this does not work for shortwave. It only works for broadcast band, okay? Turn up the volume. Now, watch this. See that? No one delivers the holidays like the U.S. Postal Service. Amazing, isn't it? Now look, uh, when you move these things, you can't just like tune them back and forth like you do a, a, you know, your radio dial. You got to kind of feather it, feather, 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 feather. You find your station, then you go nice and easy, real feather, 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 okay? Now let's go down below uh, 70. Let's go down in that area down there. We'll go down around this area here. Now when you get down below 70 or 700 kilocycles, really, you have to throw in that additional capacitor. So we'll flip the switch on. We'll crank up the volume. See if we can pick up a station. Not much going to be here today, but... There's a very weak station. Very weak. Alright, let's go ahead and tune our antenna. See what happens. Because... Tells the story of Christmas. This chapter Isn't that amazing? Got to go easy and with it. And celebrations and gifts and books and dramas and pageants. Since uh, that's amazing. I, I'm stunned by that. Anyway, that's how it works. Now, by the way, we're going to be seeing it in some. If I go above and and uh, the lower end of the scale, if I go you know above 70, rich. let's go to 70. Turn up the volume all the way. I have to flip the switch off. Okay, watch. Now listen to it. See how it decreases? Well, that's it. I recommend everybody at least make one in their life. I'm glad I did. This will be given to the lady and her husband who received the Atwater Kent 145. I think she'll like it. If, for, if nothing else, it'll be a great conversation piece in her house. Hope you liked it. This is how they work. And uh, until next time, I guess, this is John.